Hey y'all, it's Vicki with Dementia with Grace. How are y'all doing? This is What Remains, Stage 6 and 7. Now a lot of people think that there is not much that remains in 6 and 7, but I find that, that there is. Um, that, you know, along the spectrum, um, you know, 6, 7 is, is late stages, it's, you know, it's the end stages, it's, it's the end. Um, and it scares people and they don't know how to respond to it. Um, but I want to encourage you that I have found in my practice, across my practice, um, with the people that are down in six and seven, that they still can respond to me. They respond to the sound of my voice. Um, they enjoy pats and giggles and songs and, you know, lotion and hands and pa even painting their fingernails for the ladies. Um, they enjoy, you know, uh, patting and, you know, and doing a rhythm on their hand. I sing and when I sing, I put their, um, the back of their hand to my voice box. Do that and talk and see how you can feel that, the, the vibration of that. And I sing a little bit, you know. There will be peace in the valley for me someday. And you can feel that right there. And we sing that. It's not my, be my, it's not my best vocal. Um, but it doesn't matter. They don't care what you sound like. They care that you're there. They care that you are making a, uh, you're, in, you're making an intention. You are trying to reach them and touch their soul. And that is what makes all the difference. Um, the same smells that they're used to, um, you know, I, I say start early, and I've said this in, our, in other activity videos and things, like I use the Jergens lotion, the one that smells like cherry blossoms. Um, that's my lotion, that's my go-to lotion. I love it, and it's very, it's very particular. People can, people can remember that. It seems like that's a very comforting, because that lotion's been around for 100 years, and so people are familiar with that scent. And they like that. And so I start using that early on when I just am talking to people and I'll say, you want some lotion for your hands? And you know, four, five, six, they'll say, yeah, I do. And then, so by the time you get down to deep six into seven, they still remember that smell and it's comforting to them. Anything that's comforting, baby powder, honey, anything, um, honeysuckle, anything that has a distinct smell, um, use that with them. Use all five senses in, in um, stage six, seven, because you never know what they're going to cue into. Certainly listening to music um, in their ears, right in their ears, so that they do have some hearing loss, they can still listen to some of it. Um, the jazz is a, de a, deep, a deeper tone. Music sometimes makes a bigger uh, impact. Um, you know, um, just listening to um, songbirds on video, um, you know, just smelling roses. I'm thinking of all the senses. Um, tasting, you know, having a little bit of salt on their tongue and then a little bit of sweet. Just the difference in that is, uh, is, is stimulating. What you're wanting to do is stimulate what remains. And what remains can still be a sense of taste, a sense of smell, a sense of sight, a sense of hearing, a sense of touch. And so you're wanting to, you're wanting to, um, to do things that, um, that stimulate all five senses. And so that's what you want to do in six and seven because that's what remains. Continue to talk to them, use their name. They may not know who you are, but you know who they are. Continue to use their name. And maybe if, you know, if it's your mother, maybe don't use mama, um, but use their first name. Say their first name. Um, or, or call them by a nickname or call them by their childhood nickname um, can, can cause a response because that's what remains for them or it's their deep, deep, long-standing memories. Um, you know, if, if they could talk about anything, they would probably talk about their siblings, not their children. Because remember, at that point, they're thinking about themselves in a young, as a young age, they're not thinking about themselves as a mother, as a father, as a husband, as a wife. They're thinking about themselves as a sibling, as a son, as a daughter. And so you want to, you want to engage with them 
at that level of their understanding and their memory and what they remember. You know, my biggest my biggest takeaway for six seven is is not to respond to what you see, um, because you see sometimes a very frail, um, drawn in, um, contracted um, body. That's what you see. That's what visually you see. But I believe that there's a soul uh, inside of that contracted body that needs very much to have connection with another soul. Um, and in whatever ways that you can connect, I encourage you to connect. Um, leave me some, some tips, you know, whatever you find, you know, maybe you are, you know, just now thinking in this way and thinking, oh, you know, I probably do need to have a deeper conversation, a, 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 a more robust conversation when I go and visit my person. Leave it down below if, it's, if, if you did and what kind of impact it made, you know, what you did. Um, you know, what lotion you used or what, you know, music you played or, you know, what, you know, just whatever, whatever you did to encourage us to do the same thing with, with our people, okay? If you're looking for support, we're over on Facebook. Uh, it's called Dementia with Grace Caregiver Support Group, and we would love to have you over there. Um, next week, I don't know what we're talking about in the next series, but we'll come up with something. Um, and I, I absolutely love to have feedback from you about what you want to hear more about, and I will definitely um, talk about those things, okay? All right, I will talk to y'all soon. I love y'all. Bye. Mwah.